Hello everyone, this is Fanamarty here, and today I have yet another Alex Reader story. So I'm going to be starting school in about a couple in about two days as of the time of recording this, so I figured it would be nice to get one last video out before I start my new school year. So why not go ahead and get started? This one is called Gothic Scars. And I should mention this before getting started is that this story includes a bit of an a, a interesting amount of abuse in it and that if you are suffering from abuse mentally or physically please consider getting some help this story is meant to be enjoyed and read not as an excuse to abuse someone or take that abuse so it's okay to get help if needed and all that stuff and i don't want this story to be used as any sort of weapon against people i really don't any amount of abuse that happens i don't want to take ownership of that but please consider getting help if you are inflicting or getting abused or any of that stuff and with all of that out of the way let's get started we're going to start with your point of view as i walked down the hallway to the main room i pulled at the sleeves on my shirt and gloves i was wearing a black long sleeve doctor St I mean, doctor strange shirt on it I mean, strange shirt black jeans with lace designs galaxy print combat boots and fingerless gloves if you haven't guessed by the clothes, I guess you could say I'm a goth. When people ask me if I'm goth, I always have to say I just enjoy the goth style and culture. And when they ask if I hate the world and if, and if I'm suicidal or anything, I get pretty annoyed. Besides, even if I did want to kill myself, I wouldn't be alone, the only one who wanted me dead. Anyway, I went to the metal detector and put my phone and wallet in the basket. It beeped loudly and the red light flashed across the room. I groaned loudly and took off my combat boots and put them and putting them in the basket. The speaker beeped loudly again and the room lit up with a green light. The door was opened and I pulled, put on my boots and grabbed my stuff. I walked to the computers and took a seat next to L on his left while, with light on his right. I never really trusted light 100%. Even before the kid case, there was just something, about, something strange about him. Then again, I'm not really one to talk. I turned on my laptop and began doing research and started doing research on the Kieta case for the next few hours. It was a really slow day in terms of Kieta killings. He wasn't really killing as often as before. I scribbled something down on my notepad and then tapped Elle's shoulder. He slowly turned his gaze away from his computer and looked at me. As he looked me in, in the eyes, I felt my heart grow lighter. It was as if a weight was lifted off my shoulders. Like drinking your favorite drink after a whole day's worth of work. I felt like I sprouted rings and wings and flew up into heaven. I blinked a, cu a couple of times to shake the thoughts out of my head. I shouldn't fall in love with him. I couldn't fall in love with him. Unless I wanted to be beaten senseless. I shook my head to get the vision, those visions from the past out of my head and away from me. But it didn't work. Regardless, I handed Elle the notepad and spoke in an excited tone. Elle, I, I think I have a theory. I began talking in a major, into a major rant. I think it's possible that the killings, I mean, that the killings slowing down isn't just anything. It's a sign. What if it means that this isn't the same kid at all? He's also killing people who have mental problems and excusable circumstances of their killings. But the original kid didn't do that. He studied the notepad and its eyes lit up. Your name, he said as he put the notepad back in my hands with one of those rare smiles. That is genius. I never even thought about that. And now for my point of view. Right as you were about to respond, your phone rang. You looked at the caller ID, ID, ID and, you f and you could feel the color drain from your face. You cleared your throat and answered the tone. Your voice hoarse as you spoke. Hello? Hey, get over here. Now. I is something wrong? Yes, you bitch. Get over here. Now. You gulped down the massive lump in your throat. Yes. Okay. You then hung up and looked at Elle. It was beyond difficult to hide the tears in your eyes. I'm sorry, guys. I... I have to go. Elle looked up at you with a mixture of worry and confusion. Light did the same, and he spoke. Is something wrong? Uh... uh yes. N no. Yes and no. It's nothing bad, I promise. I just have to hurry home. Goodbye. You then grabbed your phone, wallet, and coat before leaving. Ellen Lyons shared a look, and 
L pressed a button on his computer before speaking. What did he? He knew he could do last name's phone records, specifically the phone call she just had. Yes, Reizaki. He then decided to do some important work of his own. You walked into your apartment and immediately regretted it. Your boyfriend was standing there with a picture in his hand. What is this? He said as you handed you, handed you the picture. It's a picture of you and Al at the cafe at a cafe having coffee together. You remember that day. It was when you first met Al. You looked up at your boyfriend with teary eyes. Babe, it's not what it looks like. He's he's just a friend. I swear. He chuckled darkly and smirked evilly at you. You expect me to believe that, you whore? He then slapped you dead across the face. The mere force from the hit was enough to make you stumble. You held your cheek as you, as you were crying. He always did this. You hated the man, but leaving him would, would, po would probably kill you. He pretended to love you in public, but when you two were in privacy, he would rape you and beat you senselessly. What scared you the most was if he ended up getting you pregnant. He would either make you get an abortion, or he would beat up. I mean, he would beat the kid just as much as it grew. I mean, just as much as it grew up. God forbid. He was about to hit you again, but before his his fist could land a blow on your face, it was caught. He looked up and saw L himself holding his fist. Ryozaki, you said. Your boyfriend looked at L, confused, but that confusion turned into an evil look that even a mother could fear. Yet L seemed unfazed by it. You must be the dude this whore is sleeping with. Hope you're ready to die, dick. He then tried to punch L with his other hand, and L caught that too. L twisted himself behind him and pulled his arms behind his back. He screamed out in agony, and L looked over at you, yelling out, Your name, get out, and get out to the parking lot. What that he is waiting. What? I can't just leave you with them and leave you with him. He looked at you and smiled sweetly. Trust me. I can handle it. And now for a time skip. You waited worriedly for L to make it out to the car. What did he bought you some hot chocolate and a blanket that meant to help calm your nerves? What did he I don't know how long I keep this up. What if he kills Ryuzaki? What did he chuckled and spoke? Trust me, Miss Last Name. L can hold his own quite well. I promise that he will be out of here. That he will be out here. As if on perfect cue, Al walked down into the parking lot with a few bruises and his clothes were tattered. "Al!" you screamed out. You hurried over and gave him a big, um, a big as hell hug. He chuckled and hugged you back. I thought I could. I th I told you I could handle him. Oh, Al! You didn't kill him, did you? You're not too hurt, are you? He then put a finger under your lips as a means of quieting you down. Last thing is, Andy was attracting the attention to yourselves. I didn't kill him. He's just unconscious, and I feel fine. He then leaned closer to you. But it was all you worth it, your name. If it meant making you making sure you're safe. Really? Yes. I knew something was strange when you left today. So I had what that he hack into the phone number that that called you today. That's when I figured it out. He then leaned against your ear. It was all worth it, though. I was scared I'd lose you before I could do this. He then lightly kissed you. You felt your heart explode into a frenzy, and your face ignite into flames. You then slowly felt yourself kiss him back. You wrapped your arms around his neck and kissed him back as tears poured down your face. Not that he chuckled and spoke to himself. Never thought I would see that. The end. Obviously, this is one of my more, I guess you say, dramatic stories than my other ones, and that was mainly because, I won't even lie, I particularly just came across this idea one day, and I don't know where it came from, it just came out into my head, and... I even remember saying, like, oh, this idea legit came out of nowhere, and I just felt like writing something before I head back to school, and I'm like, screw it, I guess I'll write this, and everything. So I did, and it was actually surprisingly interesting, and it took me a whole day to make it, and everything, mostly because of procrastination, but it was much longer than I thought it would be, mainly because of immense amounts of improvision, and everything, improvising, and stuff that really made it super long, and I'm like, good god, like, and I can only imagine how long it would have been if I posted it, if I made it, if I read it out in a notebook, like, good god. 
But regardless, guys, I hope that you all enjoy this video, even though it's super long. And as always, this is Phenomerator, and I'll be seeing you all very soon. Bye-bye.